Melatonin is fascinating hormone. You know, uh, the pineal was considered the seat of the soul by Rene Descartes, and the pineal makes melatonin. It's been around for a while, and I've been mean, around for a while in evolution. Which organisms produce melatonin? Bacteria, all eukaryotes, fungi, invertebrates, vertebrates, humans. It, it's something that worked early on and keeps on working. And it's an essential part to what we do in keeping people happy and healthy. So it's evolutionarily conserved. And anything that's conserved that long, here we go, got to be important. They're higher at night, of course. It tells the organism when, when it's night and conveys info about the length of day to organism. Especially if you're a bacteria floating around, you know, how do you know what time it is? How do you know what the cycles of life are if you're a plant? The only way you know is how long is the day and melatonin confers that. And so it connects life to the cycles of the universe. The days, seasons, and years. So that, that sounds kind of cosmic, so may, maybe it is the, the seed of the soul. Produce melatonin. This is from the very interesting review some years back in New England Journal. Saw that with tryptophan and with folate and B6 as cofactors. You got serotonin and then onward to N acetyl 5 methoxy tryptamine or melatonin. And this again is our biological clock. It's coordinated by the suprachiasmatic nucleus. There's also extra pineal production, and it's produced in darkness and suppressed in light. Any light. You know, if you're up at night for a moment and exposed to white light, your melatonin production is off for the night. It uh, gets into the nucleus. It, it, crosses all cell membranes and gets into the nucleus and the mitochondria of cells. So that's why it's very fascinating as an antioxidant, because not many will actually enter the nucleus and enter the mitochondria. Levels decline with aging, about 10 to 15 percent per decade, and of course it controls our circadian rhythm, controls our sleep-wake cycle. So peak melatonin levels decline with age. And nighttime peaks, nighttime spikes aren't as spiky anymore with age. Low melatonin levels are associated with everything bad. Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, insulin resistance, breast cancer, and other cancers. Do you have to measure this for your evaluation? I don't think so. You just know it's getting lower in everybody. And there may be benefits, pharmacological melatonin in everyone. So. I don't get numbers on melatonin. Melatonin is arguably the best free radical scavenger, more effective than glutathione or vitamin E. It's effective against the hydroxyl radical. And since it gets into the nucleus, it protects DNA from injury. Protecting DNA, you're protecting against mutations, which can you know, lead to you know, cancer especially in pharmacologic concentrations. So again, when we're treating with melatonin, usually in this bioidentical hormone concept, it's replacement therapy, and that may be a low dose, half a milligram, a milligram, but often it's in pharmacologic doses, 5, 10, 15, 20 milligrams. It protects against the pro-oxidation effects of iron. So again, could this be, if, if we, we have a battle of the antioxidants, could this be the ultimate antioxidant? It could be, since it protects everything. Lipids, proteins, and DNA. It helps turn on glutathione. Protects the mitochondria along with CoQ10. Protects against ischemia reperfusion in injury and ionizing radiation. This is an article by Russ Ryder. And he is, say, the, you know, uh, the godfather of melatonin. He's published, uh, close to 2,000 peer-reviewed articles on melatonin. So if you want to delve into melatonin, in your, go into PubMed and type writer, R, and you'll have a vast array of literature. Immune function is enhanced. So tumor growth inhibited...